So my second chance started on um, June 1st, 2011, my senior year of high school. I woke up that morning, it was the last day of classes, and I was gonna go home that night and kill myself. When I was trying to make this decision, um, I come from a long past of abuse from my dad. So at that point, I was like, this is my only way out. Um, I was also being abused quite a bit at school. Um, so I was getting it at home, getting it at school. So I was like, there's no other possible way that I'm going to do anything with my life. So I might as well just stop. And um, so I went to school that day, and while I was in first period algebra, I was writing my letter to my parents, telling them that I love them, and that this was not their fault, and that I just had things that I couldn't conquer. So the end of the day comes, it's sixth period English. My English teacher, um, was my biggest supporter at that point. She was kind of like second mom, bonus mom kind of thing. Um, so I was leaving and because I knew that I had to get to an event later that night before I was gonna go home and kill myself, I hurriedly put my things in the backpack and the note slipped out. So she called me over and because, like I said, we had a very good relationship, she had already opened the note and read it. So she said, come here. And she looked at me with tears in her eyes and she said, what is this about? And I looked at her and I said, I just can't do it. And she said, you can't do what? And I said, I just can't go home and let him beat me again. And she said, who? Because at this point, she knew nothing. The school knew nothing. My friends knew nothing. I was by myself with this. So I broke down and I told her everything. And then I told her about the girls who had followed me from middle school to high school and made my entire high school living hell. And she looked at me and she said, you are a straight A student because you're a fighter. She said, this, this is crap. She said, I've known you for a fighter your entire four years here. And today you are not giving up. She was my second chance because she believed in me. And that was the first person who told me that I was worth something. Because my entire life, I was told the exact opposite. And so I kind of pacified her and I said, yeah, I'm gonna come to school tomorrow, it's gonna be fine, because we had graduation practice the next day. I was not planning on coming to school the next day. So I went home, and at that time I was 18, so technically she didn't have to tell my parents, so we kind of kept it between us because she thought that I was gonna get it taken care of. Well, I was, just not the way she planned for me to. So I walked at home, I walked in the house, and I said, I'm not really hungry, I'm just gonna go to bed. Now, my mom being my mom knew that this wasn't my usual thing. So she said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine, I'm just really tired, I'm gonna go to bed. So at this point, I was on anxiety meds um, for the absolute hell storm that was my life. And I had just refilled the prescription, so I knew I had enough. So as I was laying them on the counter, laying my note on the counter for my parents, my six-year-old little brother walked in. And he said, sissy, he said, why is all that medicine on the table? You only take one of those a day. And I said, well, I'm a little extra sad today, so I'm gonna take more. And he goes, okay, I'll wake you up when dinner's ready. And he left. Now, I sat in that room for 45 minutes and stared at those pills and thought, oh my God, what if he walks in this room and finds me dead? Because he's gonna think that I'm sleeping because he's six. And then my next thought was, oh my God, my dad's gonna take this out on them and then they're gonna get beat and I'm not gonna be there to save them because I was the fixer, I was the one who saved everyone. But in that moment, I felt like I could not save myself. So, needless to say, I did not do it. Obviously, I'm standing here. Um, so he walked back in the room and he said, sissy, dinner's ready. And I looked at him and I said, 
No matter what anybody tells you in this entire universe, you are loved, you are important, and please, for the love of God, never think anything less. And he looked at me and he goes, well, yeah, you always tell me that. And I said, yeah, but you have to believe me. And he goes, I always do. He goes, you're the best person ever. And he and my English teacher were my second chance because I walked into school the next day and she said, you have no idea how much I worried last night that you were not gonna walk through that door this morning. And then a week later I graduated and I'm here today to tell you the story.